The San Andreas of the North, Alaska recent quake activity, the volcanic arc, faults extending all the way to the Arctic. We'll take a look at the amazing, this is basically the arc going all the way. If you take this arc of the Aleutian Islands and extend it towards the North Pole, that's where we're getting the Arctic quakes as well. Now, obviously there are no seismographs out there. There's basically nothing out there. The closest ones are uh, in Alaska, and they could be hundreds of miles away. But we are getting activity there, and to me it looks as if there's something uh, perhaps uh, underneath that we cannot see, obviously. But if you extend that arc, it goes into that area. Now these are the Alaska uh, Geology Center telling us where the faults are. Uh, the red are the most recent, but you can see that the whole of Alaska obviously is volcanic and full of faults. We had a recent earthquake today, 5.4 magnitude, 161 kilometers east-southeast of Amatignac Island, basically in the center of the Aleutians in the North Pacific Ocean. As we know, all the Aleutian Islands are volcanic islands, and that was a big one. This was after yesterday's quake of 4.1 in the Arctic Sea, the Arctic Ocean, in the middle of the Canadian, the Canada Basin. Now concerning the regional information of the Am Amatignac Island, it's a, a subduction zone as we know. The Aleutian Arc extends about 3,000 kilometers Gulf of Alaska in the east to the Kamchatka Peninsula in the west, which is in Russia. It makes the region where the Pacific Plate subducts into the mantle beneath North America Plate. The subduction is responsible for generating of the Aleutian Islands and the deep offshore Aleutian uh, Trench. The curvature of the arc results in a westward transition of relative plate motion from trench normal compressional in the east to trench parallel translational in the west accompanied by westward, westward variations in seismic activity, volcanism, overriding plate composition. The Aleutian Arc is generally divided into three regions, the western, the central, and the eastern Aleutians. And I would say that this arc, if you take it, basically that arc goes all the way into the Arctic if you extend it. And that's where we get the north, uh, the Arctic quakes. Now relative to the fixed North American plate, the Pacific plate is moving northwest at a rate that increases from about 60 millimeters a year at the arc's eastern edge to 76 millimeters a year at its western terminus. The eastern Aleutian arc extends from the Alaska Peninsula to the, in the east to the Fox Islands in the west. Motion along this section of the arc is characterized by arc perpendicular convergence and Pacific plate subduction beneath thick continental lithosphere. This region exhibits intense volcanic activity and has a history of mega thrust earthquakes. The central Aleutian Arc extends from the Andreanoff Islands in the east to the Rat Islands in the west, and here motion is characterized by westward increasing oblique convergence and Pacific plate subduction beneath thick, thin, thin oceanic lithosphere, and along this portion of the arc. The Wadati Benyoff zone is well defined into depths of about 200 kilometers, despite oblique of convergence, active volcanism, and mega thrust earthquakes are also present along this margin. The western Aleutian stretching from the west end of the Rat Islands in the east to the Komandorsky Ostrova, Ostrov means islands, Komandas means Commander, Commander Islands, uh, rush in Russia to the west is technologically different from the central and eastern portions of the arc. The increasing component of transform motion between the Pacific and North American plates is evidenced by diminishing active volcanism. The last volcanic active volcano is located at Bull Deer Island in the far western portion of Rat Island chain. This portion of the subduction zone has not hosted large earthquakes or megathrust events in recorded history. Instead, the largest earthquakes in the region are generally shallow, 
predominantly strikes of events from magnitude about five to six. Deeper earthquakes do occur, but rather scarcely and with small magnitudes about four, down to approximately 50 kilometers. Now most of the seismicity along the Aleutian Arc Islands results from thrust faulting occurring along the interface between Pacific and North American plates extending from near the base to the trench in depths of 40 to 60 kilometers. Slip along this interface is responsible for generating devastating earthquakes. Deformations also occur within the subduction slab in the form of intermediate depth earthquakes that can reach depths of 250 kilometers. Normal faulting events occur on the outer rise region of Aleutian arcs resulting from the bending of the Pacific plate as it enters the Aleutian trench. Also deformation of the overriding North American plate generating shallow crustal earthquakes. The Aleutian Arc is a seismically active region, evidenced by the many moderate to large earthquakes occurring every year. Since 1900, this region has hosted 12 large earthquakes above 7.5 magnitude, including the May 7, 1986 magnitude 8 Andreanoff Island, June 10, 1997 7.9 magnitude Andreanoff Island, November 17, 2003 7.8 Rat Island earthquakes, Six of these great earthquakes, magnitude 8.3 or larger, occurred along the Aleutian Arc that together have ruptured almost the entire shallow megathrust contact. The first of these major earthquakes occurred August 17, 1906 near the island of Amchitka, magnitude 8.3 in the western Aleutian Arc. But unlike the other megathrust, earth, megathrust earthquakes along this arc, this event is thought to have been an intraplate event occurring in the shallow slab beneath the subduction zone interface. The first megathrust event along the arc during the 20th century was November 10, 1938, magnitude 8.6, Shumigan Island earthquake. This event ruptured an approximately 300 kilometer long stretch of the arc from the southern end of Kodiak Island to the northern end of the Shumigan Islands and generated a small tsunami that was even recorded as far south as Hawaii. Now, I won't go into this, it's a long, long thing to read, but I will give you the link to this. You can read it on your own. The Aleutian Island arc along the Gulf of Alaska crustal earthquakes occur as a result of transmitted deformation and stress associated with the northwestern convergence of the plate that collides a block of oceanic and continental material into the North American plate. In 2002, the Denali Fault ruptured in a sequence of earthquakes that commenced October 23rd with a 6.7 Ninana Mountain right lateral strike strip earthquake and culminated in the November 3rd 7.9 magnitude Denali earthquake which started as a thrust earthquake along the then unrecognized fault and continued with larger right lateral strike strip event along the Denali and Toshunga Faults. So, see, even the Denali earthquake, that was the earthquake that gave, that was a um, 7.9, November 3rd, 2002. After that earthquake, it gave uh, an earthquake swarm to Yellowstone Supervolcano a couple of weeks later. Uh, that's the Denali earthquake that we keep talking about. And um, it was, it took place in an unrecognized fault. So they are still they are still finding out concerning faults. They don't know all of them yet. Now let's take, go take a look at the image of the quakes that we had today. We had a tremendous amount. Oh, sorry. Um, it gives us a, okay. This is the past week. Oh, and we uh, since I I started the video. We've had in the past hour, one, two, three, four, five, five earthquakes along that arc. This is the yesterday's, this is yesterday's 4.1 magnitude close to, the, it's in the Canada Basin, close to the North Pole in the Arctic. Obviously, they don't have any information there. It's in the middle of nowhere, but I guess it could be around here. These are ridges as well. Um... Let's pull out a little bit. Okay, this is the arc. You can see it 
This is the subduction area. This is the arc. And as we said, the western part is more active than the eastern part, even though we did have an earthquake on the Kamchatka Peninsula today of 4.3, okay, at 9.29 a.m. UTC. We had a 5.4 magnitude uh, 12 hours later. No, that was a, tw uh, this was, sorry, this was, uh, yeah, on the 10th. Okay, this was 12 hours earlier. Okay, 5.4 magnitude. 10 kilometers depth, and uh, that was even deeper, 43 kilometers. And you can see the activity here, the San Andreas of the north. A lot of these, uh, we said the Denali earthquake of here, 2002, it was on a fault line that they, it was un undiscovered. They're finding them all the time. There are so many. So this is the activity that we had just today. The blue is today's. Okay, it's 4.1, 5 5.4. The blue is today. The, all of these Aleutian Islands are volcanic islands. And these, this is the arc. And if you extend the arc to me, I mean, they don't know everything. They don't know everything. The Denali the fault line was, was undiscovered until it cracked. Uh, if you extend it, it's perfectly extended that way. And um, this is the San Andreas of the north. And it's in, Tremendous amount of activity. Okay, so these are the past hour, and you can see the uh, the the yellow of the past week. Okay, uh, a tremendous amount of activity. Uh, some of them are small, so they cannot be felt. But the people in Alaska are definitely used to earthquakes, and a lot of these mega thrust earthquakes also give tsunamis. And we'll take a look at. Uh, what's happening on the west coast as well. We had one here as well for magnitude. I doubt that it was on the Juan de Fuca plate and uh, this past hour as well. The geysers of course have the biggest geothermal plant in the world and uh, since they have established that geothermal plant there has been an uptick of earthquakes and uh, an in increase in the intensity of the magnitude, magnitude of the earthquakes. Okay, this is Ridgecrest as we know. Okay, and some of them are Coso, and what is this one? This must be in Nevada. Yes. Okay. And uh, oh, and we had our usual daily activity in the areas of Pawnee, Oklahoma. Pawnee is an area full of fracking sites right there. Um, it doesn't mean that all of these earthquakes are due to fracking, but um, fracking can bring about earthquake activity sooner than it would have happened uh, normally. So this is it. I believe that uh, this arc could extend that way as well, up this way. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.